This video is made possible by Envato Elements. Hey, it's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple boil effect, a squash and stretch rig, and how to easily transition between elements using match cuts and after effects. And I'm gonna do all of that while sharing what I believe is one of the most valuable resources you can have as a motion designer, access to an asset library, more specifically, Envato Elements. Yes, I know this sounds like the start of an infomercial, but one thing that I take very seriously on my channel is authenticity. I will never recommend products, services, or subscriptions that I don't believe in. And I've been using Envato Elements for a while now, and it's been an enormous asset, millions of assets actually, in my day-to-day -day workflow. Anytime I need stock photos, footage, illustrations, mockups, or even fonts, I head straight to Envato Elements. And for the first time, Envato Elements is offering free seven-day trials, allowing you to browse and use this massive library of assets completely free free of charge. One of the most valuable aspects of Envato Elements is just how affordable it is. For less than $200 per year, you get unlimited access to their library of millions of different assets, all in one subscription. From After Effects templates to stock video and music, sound effects, illustrations, mockups, fonts, even Procreate brushes, and a whole lot more. I've been using the high quality assets from Envato Elements for a while now, and it saves me a massive amount of time when I don't have to design or illustrate everything that I put into my videos. It allows me to focus on actually making content for you to watch instead of having to spend so much time building up those assets. The same can be said for freelancers working on client projects. Time is money, and having the ability to download and use absolutely any asset from Envato Elements at no extra cost is such a time saver. I would go as far as to say that the amount of time that you save in your first use of Envato Elements will be enough to cover the subscription and give you unlimited access for an entire year. As a motion designer, it's all about working smarter, not harder and Envato Elements is about as smart as you can get. Now let me show you how I use Envato Elements to make my tutorials. I'm gonna teach you how to make a boil effect in After Effects, but I need something to apply that boil effect to, and designing those assets takes time. So instead of using up my own time to create those assets, I'm just gonna head over to Envato Elements and search through the millions of high quality assets that have already been created by designers. So I'm gonna to go to the Graphics tab, and I'm gonna search for something that I think will be cute, like an ice cream cone, since this is gonna be squash and stretch and bouncy and fun. And I have access to tons of different assets in a variety of style right here in my first page results. And I'm just gonna scroll through here until I find something that I think fits what I have in my head. And you know what, this one right here, I really like the look and feel of this, the offset stroke, the colors are really nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. I'll click on the download button, choose the project that I wanna apply to my YouTube project and click add and download. And immediately I get a zip file that I can open up. It has an EPS that I can open up in Illustrator. So I'll just extract that to my desktop and open it up. So here we have it in Illustrator all ready to go. I think I'm gonna start with this one right here. And on Overlord, I'm gonna use the layers at comp setter button checked so that I can just push this over to After Effects and it will recreate it right in the center of my frame. And I'll rename this one a cone. And then I'll jump back to Illustrator and let's say this bowl of ice cream right here, I'll push that over as well. I'll call that bowl. And then one more, maybe this watermelon popsicle right here, I'll just push that over and rename this popsicle. And just like that, I've gotten some assets that I can immediately start teaching from without having to design anything myself. And then I'll just make a solid with controller command Y and we'll name this background BG for background and I'll make it an off-white color that's a little bit warmer, maybe like that, click OK, make it the comp size, send it to the back and just lock it with control or command L. So now I have my elements ready to go and I actually do want these centered. So I'll select all of them, go to my align panel and set align layers to composition and center those up. Now what I wanna do is create my animation and we're gonna start with the boil effect. So I'll just shift two of those layers out of the way and we'll build the effect on top of the first layer and then apply it to the other two. We're gonna do this with the turbulent displace effect. So I'm gonna go to my effects and presets panel and my Jake panel is a little tall here, so let's resize that, but I'm gonna search for Turbulent Displace and apply that to this shape layer. Now this is gonna distort everything really large at first. I'm just gonna go to the amount slider and basically turn that down to around 12 and the size all the way down to two. Now it's a much more subtle effect and I could probably increase that amount a bit. 
but it's giving me these squiggly edges around the outside of my illustration. And this can be animated if I go into the evolution options, that I have a random seed value, and this is exactly what I want, random movement on that distortion. So instead of setting keyframes for this, I'm going to use an expression to generate a random value on every frame. So I'll just Alt or Option click on that value. And in the expression window down here, I'm just gonna type random, press Enter to auto fill with those parentheses. And in these parentheses, I just need to put a value. I'm gonna do a really large one, 10,000. And now this expression will generate a random value between zero and 10,000 on every frame of this composition. So if I click off and play back, I'm gonna get that wiggly edge. Now that might be a little too extreme, so I'm gonna drop this amount down to say 30. And that even might be a little too much, but at 100% magnification, if I go back to, let's see, 100% right there, it's much less than noticeable, and that's actually pretty much what I was going for. But I wanna add another layer of turbulent displace on top of this. So I'll select that effect, duplicate it, and this time make the size bigger. I'll zoom in nice and close so we can see exactly what's happening again. Instead of having this really tight distortion, I'm gonna make it bigger, and I'm gonna turn the amount down to maybe around eight or nine. And this distortion, since it's a duplicate of the first one, is still going to have that random expression, giving me that random seed that will animate it. And if I play this back, now we're just getting a larger distortion over the entire thing. And maybe the amount could be turned up just a little bit and the size up just a little bit more as well. I don't want it to get so crazy like this. So it's a balance between the amount and the size to get the look that you're after. So maybe we'll drop this down to say seven and the size maybe down to say 15. There we go, now we've got this animated boil effect. Very simply, all I have to do to transfer this over to the other two layers is grab those two effects, Control C to copy, select the other two layers and paste, and now each one of these layers is going to be boiling just like the first one. So let me just trim these up a little bit and you can see that boil effect has been applied to each piece of artwork. Now I need to transition between each one and I'm gonna do this with both a squash and stretch rig and a match cut. So the squash and stretch rig is also gonna be driven by an effect, this time the transform effect. So I'm gonna drag that out to the effect stack, and this is just a layer of transform properties, just like the ones that we have down here in our layer, except instead of being driven right on the layer, they're driven by this effect. So I can turn it on and off, I can apply it without affecting the other transform properties. It's a really, really smart way of animating, and it's gonna be absolutely perfect for a squash and stretch rig. First thing I wanna do is tie the position and anchor point together, because if I move the position around, that's gonna obviously move the layer around, and if I move the anchor point around, it's gonna move the position of the layer in the opposite direction. I need that anchor point to be right where I want this layer to squash and stretch, which will be right down at the bottom. So to get around that offset position, I'm just gonna double click on the position value that will bring it up down here in the timeline. And I'll just use my property pick whip click and drag to the anchor point, and now wherever the anchor point goes, the position goes with it, and the layer is no longer moving around. So I can move that right down to the bottom of the cone, right at the tip, where I want it to squash and stretch from. So that's where I want it. And then I'll go into the scale, and make sure that uniform scale is unchecked. Now I need to add an expression to the scale height so that whatever I do to the scale width, the scale height reacts to it in an opposite way. This is actually a really simple expression. I'm just gonna alter option, click on it, and in this window say 200 minus, and then use my expression pick whip to grab the scale width. So this is going to give the scale height a value of 200 minus whatever the scale width value is. I'll finish with a semicolon and click off and nothing changes because 200 minus 100 is 100. But as soon as I increase the scale width, it's going to squash down. The scale height is going to be affected inversely of the scale width. So I can squash and stretch this very easily now, and I can even move my anchor point around to anywhere I want. I can see the wireframe of my vector paths so of that original layer. So if I wanted to squash and stretch from the top instead of the bottom, I could do that. This is a really flexible rig and something that you only have to build once and then you can just save it as an animation preset just by clicking on transform, going up to animation, save animation preset, and then it will show up over here in your animation presets wherever you saved it. All right, now that I have my rig, I need to actually animate it. So let's add a keyframe to the scale width and I'll press U to isolate just that keyframe and I'll zoom in. I want this to start obviously at 100%. Then I'll go forward maybe six frames. So I'll just scrub forward to frame six. There we are and I'm gonna scale this up. So I want it to stretch up 
anticipating the motion of it squashing down before we match cut to the next layer. So this is gonna be stretched pretty extremely. I'm gonna go up to maybe 70% on the width and then drop down maybe three frames for it. So I'll use page down one, two, three times and then crank this value up so it gets really squashed out. So we'll go up to maybe 160 for that downward position. And then I'm just gonna complete the bounce animation and you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna go forward, let's see, that was three frames down, we'll go forward three more frames up and probably go as far if not further than we did before. So maybe the scale width we'll put down to say 50. It's really tall and skinny here. We'll go forward one, two, three, four frames and then drop it down. Not quite as extremely this time, maybe around here. And I'm using that wireframe of the original vector artwork as my reference for where 100% is. And then I'll go forward a few more frames. I'm not really counting at this point. I just wanna set my keyframes and then I'll adjust the timing afterwards. So we'll just go back back and forth a few times and wind up back at 100. And I'm just gonna easy ease all these keyframes with F9 on the keyboard and just play this back to see what it looks like. All right, not bad. I've got the keyframes there, uh, but the timing needs some adjustment. So let's zoom in here and actually I'm gonna ease some of this as well. So I'm gonna bring up my graph editor and I'm using the value graph, which if you go to this menu right here, it's off my screen recording, but just below this first option is edit value graph and that's what I'm seeing here. I know I wanna make this ease out of the first position really strong. So I'm just gonna pull that handle out while holding shift as well as pull this one out a little bit while holding shift, this one as well and that will make these incoming and outgoing velocities of these two first keyframes much more extreme. Honestly, I'm probably gonna wanna do this across the board a little bit, just so it's not at its default easing value of like 33%, I believe is the default. Just sweetening this a little bit makes everything feel a little bit more snappy. So let's just play that back and already we're getting a much better feel. Now, that might be a little bit too extreme on the way back up, that's a little stretched out. So I'm just gonna grab this keyframe right here while holding shift and pull it back. And now our most extreme keyframe is when it bounces down the first time, which is good because that's where I'm gonna do my match cut, right on that most extreme bounce. And that's a great way to hide the match cuts, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's finish this off. I think I'm oscillating one more time than I really need to. So instead of having to go up, down, up, down, up, down, I'm gonna get rid of those last two ups and downs right here. Just delete those two keyframes and bring this one back and that way it won't be quite as extreme. And I'm just adjusting these a little bit and not even seeing what those adjustments are doing. But once you get used to the graph editor, you can kind of read it and understand what the motion is gonna look like just by the timing and spacing. So let me play this back again. And that's looking okay. I think this last value is just a little too high and a little too snappy. So I'm gonna back that off just a little bit and play that one more time. And that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna call that good and we can move on to the next layer. So this is where we're going to take advantage of this transform effect. I wanna line up this keyframe right here with the end of my layer. And maybe the layers should last one second each. So I'm just gonna trim it to that point with Alt and the right bracket, and then move my keyframes forward. Now this third keyframe is where I want that match cut to happen. So I'm gonna shift that forward just one frame past the end of this layer so that on that frame, we switch to the next layer. So what I wanna do is copy that transform effect now, bring this layer back so that it's visible at this point and paste the effect right there. Now that put the start of the keyframes where my playhead was and that's not what I want. I want that third keyframe to be right there so that these keyframes line up with these keyframes. I also need to make sure that I put that anchor point in the same positions. So let me collapse the turbulent displaces and then move that anchor point up to the base of the bowl. And actually it might make more sense to move the bowl down so that I have that anchor point for all three of my layers. And to make sure I can always see that, I'm gonna press Control or Command R to bring up my rulers, drag a guide down on that horizontal ruler, Press Ctrl or Command R to hide that one more time, but now I can see where the base of that cone is when I move to the next layer. I want that to be on the same floor, so I'm gonna click and drag while holding Shift, 
make sure that transform anchor point is still there. It is, and now I should have a pretty seamless match cut between these two layers. So I'll play it back, and there you go. With a simple match cut, because of that continuing animation from one layer to the next, you hardly even notice that there was an edit. It's just like it morphed from one layer into the next. And the similar shapes between the illustrations and those colors lining up, that makes a huge difference. But that's a really clever, really easy way to make it through a transition without having to do a lot of work. Now that I know that's working, let me just copy these keyframes and paste them, and we'll move them to the two second mark. So again, I'll go to two seconds with that third keyframe, shift it forward with Alt, right arrow, one frame after, and trim that layer right there at the two second mark. Then I'll grab my other layer, go forward one frame with page down, and press the left bracket to bring the endpoint to that spot. I'll copy this transform effect and paste it again. Press U to bring up those keyframes. Grab all of them and grab that third keyframe right there. That's where it needs to align with this layer below it. And now we should have another match cut. I just need to double check to make sure that it's aligned with that guide layer. It's pretty close, there we are. Let's isolate just that section right there. I'll play that back and we're transitioning now from the bowl of ice cream to the watermelon popsicle. And now I can transition one more time back into the original layer. So I'll find that match cut keyframe again, which would be right here. I'm gonna back it up one frame with page up, Alter Option, right square bracket, and I'll just press N to set my work area there as well. And then we need to jump back to the start of the animation and apply those same keyframes right here. But if I copy and paste, that's gonna overlap some of them. So what I really need to do is shift these forward maybe 10 frames, Alt plus Shift plus the right arrow, and that shifts all of that forward. I'll paste and then back this up so that the third keyframe is at the start of the layer. Grab these one more time, Alt, Shift, or Option Shift in the left arrow, and now all my keyframes are aligned one more time. So let's play this back all together. We've got nice squash and stretch, we've got our boil effect, and our match cuts going between each one of these layers. And you can easily play around with how these are arranged. If you don't like how the ice cream goes from the cone to the bowl to the popsicle, we could just rearrange the order here. We could go from the cone to the popsicle and then the bowl. So let's play that back. Ice cream cone, popsicle, bowl, ice cream cone, popsicle bowl. It's really easy to adjust, and because this was driven with effects, it's also really easy to just manipulate. If instead of aligning this to the bottom of the cone, I could say let's align it to the center of each layer. So I'll grab that anchor point on the transform effect for each instance, drag that up to the center, Make sure that they're all roughly in the same position, and now if I play it back, the squash and stretch is gonna happen from the center of the layer and still work as that match cut. And just like that, I'm able to teach you how to make a simple boil effect, a squash and stretch rig, and how to animate between them using a match cut very easily and seamlessly, all without having to design anything myself. I was able to just download those illustrations and get right to work. Now that's some big brain stuff. And Vato Elements really is the best deal out there for design and video assets. So follow the link in the description to start your seven day trial today. Now please note that this free trial rollout is not available in every country yet. So if you live outside the US, you'll need to check to see if your country is eligible for that trial. And a very important note, after your trial ends, you will be charged for a subscription if you do not cancel ahead of time. You've been warned, no complaining. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And it's what's done. And it's what's done.